So the theme for this kōrero, this hui, is equity and beyond. The goal of achieving health equity underscores all of the research that Healthier Lives has funded. And it's not simply about treating everyone equally, but working to achieve equal health outcomes. This is what really saves lives, brings greater social justice, honours to tiriti, and it happens to save health dollars. At this event, we're also looking beyond equity to see how we can achieve a good level of health across our population that will enable everyone to thrive and at the same time mitigate the impact of climate change. Our hope for these two days is to spark new conversations and connections between people who work in communities and in different parts of the health and research sectors. We want to support the uptake of evidence into policy and practice and ultimately contribute to a better and more equitable health outcome arrangement for all New Zealanders and a healthier planet. I talked about uh, healthier lives. I think there are three things that I'd like to emphasise about our science challenger. The first is co-governance. Healthier Lives was the first uh, national science challenge to adopt a co-governance model in October 2016. And I do acknowledge my predecessor, Dr Jenny McMahon, who initiated our co-governance journey. Co-governance has enabled us to sharpen our focus, have important conversations and direct resources to the most pressing priorities. In relation to that, we've brought in two outstanding young Māori researchers and as interns to give them an experience of governance and to build future leadership capacity. Our experience of co-governance has been overwhelmingly positive, enabling us to build the level of trust needed for robust discussion. From its inception, Healthier Lives funded research that was genuinely co-designed in partnership with communities. Researchers tell us that the focus on implementing research evidence within our science challenge is a prominent feature. From its, our research teams fully understand the expectation within our, our challenge that they will work collaboratively to produce outcomes that are useful for others. At the start of any project, our researchers must articulate a pathway to implementation and provide regular updates on their progress towards it. Since 2019, the requirement for meaningful engagement with the next and end users of research has been embedded in all of our research commissioning and monitoring processes. And tomorrow, we will launch a report about the lessons that we've learned from this. The next point is about support for our research teams. Relationships between peoples are important in every facet of our endeavour. The high level of collegiality that we have required of our researchers has led to new ways of working, new collaborations, new initiatives and a sense of shared purpose and commitment. We put a premium into staying alongside research projects for their whole life span, from the initial identification of research priorities to the design of projects and the completion of research to the dissemination and implementation of results. We've been conscious that some funding models have researchers often having to chase the next grant and that sometimes there is no funding available to follow up the work that they've already completed and to see a project through to implementation. With careful oversight, our director, Professor Jim Mann, and his management team, we've been able to provide the capacity to provide top-up funding to, to extend research, address unplanned contingencies, and support the dissemination and translation of research findings. The distinguished international scientists who we have offer constructive and encouraging advice 
to our research groups. Several have visited New Zealand to review research in progress and given feedback, as I've said.